Dr. Abdurrahim, I want to thank you so much for taking the time for this interview. And first, we'd like to know a brief about the training session in which you participated at the Qatar Water Surgery Center. Um, well, this is the first um, uh, robotic surgery workshop to be to be held in uh, in here Qatar Robotic Surgery Center, and it was initiated because it was initiated because um, uh, we're um, uh, we're uh, holding the uh, uh, conference, the eighth conference of the Gulf, Gulf Heart Association, um, and along that, in fact, we uh, thought, why not? Since we in fact started uh, robotic cardiac surgery, why not have a robotic surgery workshop for the, those cardiac uh, surgeons who are coming to participate in the in the conference? So it was a good opportunity uh, since we have the uh, the conference uh, uh, starting. In fact, it's already started. So um, uh, that, that's how it started. The idea started with the Gulf Heart Association conference. How do you find the responses from the participants? The response? Yes. They're very impressed, in fact. They were impressed of the setup here, the, um, the, uh, the center itself, the, the, uh, um, the technology involved in, in the center. Uh, they were impressed, in fact, of the, the training. Uh, although it's the first training, but I think uh, it was uh, organized uh, in such a way that people were, uh, were very happy with it. So we'd like to know more about the, participate, the collaboration between HMC and QRSC, so can you tell us more? Yeah, uh, I guess the uh, collaboration goes back to probably one, one and a half years or maybe more than this. I was not involved in this. Um, uh, my colleague, uh, Dr. Abdel Ansari, is, uh, is directly involved with this. Um, so the initially, I, I guess, um, the two, uh, the two uh, places, uh, uh, vision and uh, initiative, coincided with, the, with each other. So, uh, Qatar Robotic Surgery Center was initiated by Her Highness uh, Sheikha Moza, and people were thinking of acquiring robotic surgery at Hamid Hospital. So, both came together and joined the, the two ideas, and that's how the, uh, the collaboration started. Uh, then started continuing, I think it's developing. Um, it, it involved, of course, the Hamid Hospital acquired the machine, um, but the training was a joint uh, training for the personnel uh, or the surgeons, not only surgeons, but the, the teams which were involved uh, in the, in, in, uh, in the uh, operative procedure, the robotic surgery. So, uh, training, continuing uh, training. Having this place here, Qatar Robotic Surgery Center, is very useful for uh, training people. So it's a, it's a kind of a, it's good that uh, both parties, in fact, came to an understanding or both initiated robotic surgery. Center. I think that that's a good collaboration because uh, at Hamid Hospital, we cannot uh, uh, continue without training. It's a continuous training, uh, and Qatar Robotic Surgery also cannot let's say, um, start, uh, cannot uh, s s survive, let's say, without having people from Hamid Hospital train them and also uh, uh, be uh, trainers for, for future uh, surgeons, robotic surgeons. So we'd like to know more about the robotic program in HMC, when it started and what are your future plans? Fortunately, as I said, uh, well, any robotic surgery, that's what I uh, understood by uh, even uh, by big centers in the world and uh, th that's what uh, was recommended is to have, to have the robotic surgery in a, in a place where different specialty, uh, specialties uh, could use it. What I mean is uh, you cannot have a robotic surgery because it's expensive at the end. You cannot have it just for one specialty. For example, you cannot have it just for cardiac surgery. Just go ahead. Yes, you could, but the, uh, the running, running cost is very expensive. Uh, then you, you need to have it where you have in a, in a general hospital in a place where different special, uh, specialties could use it. In, uh, in Hamid Hospital, of course, it started with the urology. Urology are using it. We as cardiac surgeons are using it. General surgeons are using it. Uh, so we crea created this multidisciplinary uh, uh, program where everybody could, could use the, uh, the machine. Um, I don't know if I answered your question. Uh, 
asking about the future plans. As well. Yeah, well, it started as this. Yeah. The future plan is to develop uh, to develop the program to uh, uh, maintain the experience and even progress on that. In fact, uh, uh, yes, I mean we uh, we need to. Uh, well, any procedure, in fact, goes through a learning curve. And I think we did not pass that learning curve. We need to still maintain and do more cases so we pass the learning curve. Uh, so we get more, uh, we become more experienced in doing the, those procedures and more comfortable in do, doing the procedures. And in the meantime, I, th I think we, we, we should also develop, uh, develop a program where we, uh, whereby we train people. Mm -hmm. So that, that's, uh, that's the aim uh, or the vision uh, of the program. Mm -hmm. uh, program started and I think it's going to stay and, and, uh, and progress. So what do you think is the status of robotic surgery in Qatar? Is it, uh, are you expecting it to increase in terms of the number of cases uh, to be here in the future? Or what, what do you see? Definitely. Um, that's what, in fact, we, we, we felt through the probably one or one and a half years where, when uh, robotic surgery started. started in small number of cases. At least in cardiac surgery, we did 12 cases over, uh, uh, through uh, uh, in one year, from March uh, 2009 to, uh, to March 2010. We, we, we did 12 cases, which is a good number, in fact, considering the small number of cases in general. So it's, it's a good number. And even urology and the other specialties, I think we're getting more and more, more cases. And I think we'll get more cases even, um, although we don't have the uh, robotic... Uh, or, machine and, uh, and the heart, uh, heart hospital, the new heart hospital, but maybe in the future we'll acquire or buy a, a machine and then we'll be able to do more cases because we'll, ha we'll have more operating time and more space to do those cases. Mm -hmm. Because uh, at present, uh, Hamid Hospital is um, very busy in fact, a long waiting list. So that, that, that may be a limit, limiting factor of doing more cases also. Mm -hmm. So hopefully in the future when we have the new hospital open, uh, we have more operating time in, in Hamid Hospital and, and the other hospitals also. Mm -hmm. So can you elaborate on the learning curve since robotics is generally a new technology, so how do you see the learning curve currently in Qatar? Um, nobody knows how many cases you need to do to, to uh, uh, let's say, uh, overcome the learning curve. Um, it, it all, uh, at the end, it um, well, you, you need to have cases. You need to do cases more consistently on a regular basis. It's, uh, it's not only the surgeon, it's, it's the whole team, in fact. Uh, robotic surgery, um, uh, it's not only a single-handed experience, not the surgeon or, or only. It's the assistant surgeon, it's the nurse, it's the uh, technical support. The whole group, in fact, need to come together uh, to, uh, to uh, mutual understanding uh, to work together, and that also uh, probably adds to the learning curve. Uh, but I think we're going through that that uh, uh, that process. Uh, at least in cardiac surgery, I, I don't think we passed that stage. We're still learning. We need to do more cases. That does not mean that that jeopardizes the patient's safety or so. Uh, but uh, we, we, we carefully. Uh, take care of, of this part, in fact. I mean, it should not um, harm patients. Uh, that's why we get uh, people from outside to help us out with, um, I mean, surgeons, experienced surgeons from outside to help us out with, with, with the robotic surgeries. Uh, whether it's in cardiac surgery, urology, we get visitors. We have visitors now um, uh, here with us from Belgium uh, who's helping us out. And he did, in fact, uh, before, and uh, we're continuing uh, our our uh, cooperation with him. Mm. But he's he's very helpful, and I think we learned a lot from, from him. That that's 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 how it uh, it works out. Uh, you need people, experienced people, to help you out, so you don't uh, jeopardize patients' safety. So some patients are a bit resistant when it comes to robotic surgeries. What message would you tell them, and why do you think they are resistant to in the first place? Um, well, sometimes it's well. Any any new things you you, you could find is um, any new ideas, new um, uh, program. You may f find I would not say uh, resistant people because 
uh, the terms uh, is uh, a little harsh but, uh, you need to convince people that this is this works and robotic surgery uh, the use of rob uh, robotic system in surgery is, is relatively new mm -hmm. so you need to convince um, the surgeons patients and even the outsiders that this is useful uh, because it, what it implies it implies that you change um, the procedure to a new uh, to a new type of procedure uh, uh, people who uh, who are used to let's say uh, the conventional one uh, they would always uh, argue about the outcome of the new the new procedure because that's already have people um, um, let's talk about cardiac surgery the conventional uh, uh, corneal by bypass surgery is well established. It's been practiced now for over uh, 40, probably 45 or 50 years. So uh, we have good results and so on. So when you change to a new procedure, you need to convince people that this is as good as uh, the conventional one. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's not difficult, but, but uh, you need uh, to produce good results to, to convince people. Mm -hmm. And it's already uh, getting better, in fact. We have good results with with uh, robotic cardiac surgery, and not only this, and other, and other specialties also. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why people are uh, indulging into this program more and more. Mm -hmm. uh, the other difficulty is the cost, of course. Um, especially if, uh, uh, people concerned with, with finance and so on, but they would argue, well, why should we do this if we could do the, the conventional one uh, conventional procedure with less cost. That's also another area of, of difficulty. Um, so I guess the, these are the some of the difficulties which probably make people think twice before uh, before uh, uh, getting involved in those procedures. So my final question, based on your experience in Qatar, how did the, the cardiologists receive uh, the robotic? Um, technology when they first encountered it, what was their reception and did they think that it can be a replacement for human surgeons or were they receptive of the technology? Well, let's start from the end. Uh, it's not a replacement to human surgery. I mean, although we have the robotic system, but it's run completely by a surgeon. So you need a, an experienced surgeon to run, to run the, the machine. These are only what's called master and slave um, system. The master is the surgeon and the slave is the robotic system. Uh, so the robotic system does not, cannot and does not do it, uh, at least for now, does not do the procedure. That's one thing. Uh, the re uh, reception of the cardiologists or cardiac surgeons? The cardiologists. Cardiologists. In fact, we have a good environment here that we, uh, so it's one department, uh, cardiology and cardiac surgery. Um, and the, uh, the chairman of the department, probably you all know, uh, Dr. Hajar, is very supportive of, of introducing new technologies, new uh, procedures. Uh, so we have all the support from uh, our colleagues cardiologists, from the, the head of the department, from the hospital. The reception of the cardiologists, of course, I mean, the, um, uh, well, does not take away patients from them. And that, that's one thing we, uh, we should realize. Uh, at the end, it's the, it's the benefit of the patient, which, which matters, in fact. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a healthy environment where we discuss all the cases. Well, not all the cases, but uh, some of the cases which uh, need discussion. Um, in fact, we get, we get a free referral from cardiologists saying that this patient, although he has a single, uh, let's say, vessel, which is, which is disease, but he's better off with, with uh, robotic uh, procedure. Although this, in other places, uh, probably technically it's doable, but in the long run they, they feel, and they, the, the team which meets and discuss the case feel that this procedure is better than just the stenting. Um, and vice versa, in fact, we get sometimes cases referred to us for surgery, and then we rediscuss the case, refer them back for stenting. So we have a healthy atmosphere where we, we uh, interact with each other uh, openly and without, uh, um, how should I put it, without, uh, without ego, let's say. I mean, we, it's not that this is my patient, I should do it, and this is your patient. Um, we, we, uh, uh, we, 
we interact and, and discuss cases before we decide what's the best procedure to that uh, type of patient. Thank you so much for this interview. And